This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From aesthetically pleasing websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is my favorite all-in-one platform for building an online brand and business presence. I switched over to Squarespace over a year ago because it offers so many product features that I needed in my business. But even if you don't have a business, I want to share with you something today that you might still find useful on Squarespace. If you're job hunting right now or in some sort of creative field where displaying your work is necessary, you can showcase your work online with a portfolio website on Squarespace. They have so many unique and professionally designed templates that can really help you stand out amongst competition. You can share your new work directly with your audience by using Squarespace email campaigns. And with their social media tools, you can also integrate your social media accounts to your site to grow your following. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to my link squarespace.com forward slash EdiaSMR to receive 10% off your first website or domain. Thank you so much, Squarespace. You've been such a help. And now, let's get into the video. Hey there, and welcome to today's Pick a Card Tarot Readings. If you're watching this at the time of upload, you might notice some Libra-related themes since we're in that season right now, and there's some major eclipse action that's going to be happening very soon, so you can most definitely use these readings for your October and November predictions. But do keep in mind that these readings are meant to be timeless, because energy is timeless. And so, just notice when this video shows up in your reality, and take that as a sign that you are now ready to hear the messages, or that the messages are now relevant to your situation. Always take what resonates and leave the messages that don't resonate. Before we pick the reading for you today, let's get into a meditation to connect to our intuition. And for that, I have my trusty little singing bowl. I'm going to ring this three times. With each ring, take a deep breath in a complete exhale out and arrive in your body, arrive in this moment. Relax your glutes and sink into your seat. Let gravity help you surrender to this moment. And softly and gently bring all of your awareness to your heart center. Relax the body. Soften your gaze, your eyebrows, part the lips, and relax your jaw. Lower the shoulders.
unclench the hands. Relax the thighs. Connect to your heart center and know that it is from here that we listen for resonance, listen for what feels right, leave the messages that don't feel right for you because they may be meant for somebody else. Follow your emotional guidance. Empower yourself with the messages today. And now, if you're ready, you can open your eyes and look at the three groups today. For group one, we have Labradorite as our crystal. This crystal is really great for Tightening your intuition, connecting to the other realms. It's a great crystal for the throat and third eye chakras. And we have two cards for you, Out with the Old and Solitude. For group two, we have a huge amethyst cluster and amethyst is also really great for the third eye for the crown it's great for connecting to our intuition also there are two cards for you group two celebration and tangle For group three, we have a smoky quartz, or this could be citrine, I'm not sure. And if it's smoky quartz, then it's a crystal for releasing dense energies. It's great for the lower chakras. If it's citrine, it's great for the solar plexus, for owning your power. And the two cards for group three are Revolutionary and Angel. Notice what stands out to you. Notice which group is calling you. Which group do you feel drawn to? Go with your feeling. You really don't have to overthink this. If you feel drawn to more than one group, you can certainly listen to more than one reading. So just go with your feeling and pick the group that you want to listen to first. Once you've chosen your reading, you can go down to the timestamps below to click on your reading, and I'll see you over there. If you chose group one, Labradorite, and the two cards that came out with it, Solitude, and Out with the Old, then this is your reading. So right off the bat, with these two oracle cards, I'm getting a sense that you're currently in hermit mode with the dense and heavy energies that have surfaced recently. You've been called to retreat into solitude and aloneness in order to work through whatever's coming up, to have more clarity over your situation, to have more autonomy also in dealing with it. And I think that's really good. Hermit mode is necessary when we're in this transitional phase 
of letting go and shedding. I also get that for some of you, however, you may have taken that to an extreme where you're really withdrawing from support and connections around you. You might be over-isolating yourself when that's not actually necessary or conducive to your healing. Because when it comes to healing, the most healing thing is connection. And it's so easy to forget about that sometimes. But I'm only getting that for some of you. And now, why don't we use the Light Seer's deck to get some insight into your current energies. Group one, what are your current energies? Oh. This deck's been a little bit difficult for me to read recently, so I'm going to shuffle it really good. One more card for group one. Here's our confirmation. We have the Hermit card, the Reverse Page of Cups, and Three of Swords. This is a really scary looking Three of Swords. Let's begin with the Hermit. So like I said earlier, it looks like you're currently in hermit mode, this is deciding to remove yourself from unnecessary social situations and influences in order to understand yourself solely based on your own influence and clarity and perspective. This is trying to figure yourself out when we're seeking deeper understanding of our patterns, what makes us tick, our traumas, and how to rise above it all. So I really like that for you. And I think the reason why we got the Page of Cups in reverse is because, you know, like I said earlier, I think for some of you, you might have been taking this hermitage to an extreme. And I see that in the reverse Page of Cups. What I mean by that is when the Page of Cups is upright, this is a very trusting young boy. He is innocent and naive, he puts his heart on his sleeve, and he's willing to risk it in the name of love. He knows he'll get hurt, he knows he doesn't know everything, but he's trusting in the greater plan and what he will gain from simple experience. So there's a lot of trust when this card is upright, a lot of openness and willingness to just experience when it's in reverse, it's a closing in on yourself, distrust, fear, and maybe a refusal to welcome offerings and new experiences. So maybe you've gone a little bit too comfortable being the hermit. You've gone a little bit too comfortable isolating yourself because, you know, being by yourself is predictable and it's safe in that sense. You don't have to worry about what anybody says or does. It's just you. To get out of that space and to work with others can be frightening when you got, you've gone so used to being alone. So I think that's why we have the Page of Cups in reverse. And we also have the Three of Swords so you are indeed processing some really heavy stuff right now and that's good to do on your own to avoid projecting and reenacting old wounds. This can be heartache, you know, unresolved emotions in the heart chakra when it comes to past relationships and wounding experiences you've had with other people. This requires you to grieve, to really feel your pain and acknowledge to what extent those past wounding experiences affected you and impacted the way you see yourself in the world. So grieve 
allow yourself to feel this to its totality. It's going to be difficult. You know, I mean, you could just see it in this card, right? There's a lot of heaviness. It's scary. But you almost you have to be this person to just to wail, to scream, to cry it out, and to feel it deeply and acknowledge it in order to let it go. So that's your current energy. Now, let's get some advice. Group one, advice. One more card for advice. And what does group one need to hear right now? What does group one need to hear? Okay. So, first of all, Spirit wants you to know that there is an offer coming in, a portal you can step into in order to receive something new in your material world and you're being asked to follow in her guidance to receive this offering the universe is literally handing it out to you like this in this card receive it this can be um, a job offering this can be a new relationship someone new that you'll meet this can be a, a promotion, some sort of leveling up in your physical reality, a new home, a new place to live, a changing of location. Something about your physical reality is about to shift and you're encouraged to allow that shift to unfold for you. And with the chariot, Acknowledge that things can go awry, and they often do. You're often pulled into very opposing directions, and that's okay. That's just the way life is. But with enough determination and focus, you can navigate your way through this towards where you want to go. That is possible if you just have enough determination have your eye on the goal. So as you can see in this card, there are two horses, one is black, one is white. This represents duality. We are constantly being pulled in two opposite directions. But with the momentum that is in this card and how steadfast and headstrong this person is on the chariot, he is bound for success and victory. And this is how you have to handle the duality of life. You're encouraged to charge forward now. You may have been quite stagnant in your hermitage and you've done enough in this space. It's time to create some movement now. You see this? <laughs> First of all, the colors are very opposite to one another. And in one card, a person is completely still. And in the other, there is absolute movement. There's so much happening, so much energy. And so you're being asked to shake things up, to just charge forward now, create some momentum in your life. And I think this will really help you further process and grieve the past to really let it go. Because... As much as you're letting go of the past, you're also welcoming the new, right? So don't forget about that, the other half, the other side of duality. As much as you're releasing, you're also welcoming. And we need to actually take action in order to welcome the new that's going to take up the space once the old leaves. <laughs> And I think that's why you have the death card here also as advice. And I love that in the Lightseer's deck, there is death at the bottom, but also rebirth. There's duality again. 
step through this portal, recognize that as much as you're dying, you are also being reborn. It's not one or the other, it's both happening at the same time. So yes, you're letting go of the old, you are shedding. And when you let go of the old, you create space for the new. So think about what you're welcoming. The other side of this coin is just as important to contemplate on. You've created space now uh, within yourself. And what are you going to let in now with the space that you've created? Step through this portal and begin to look at the other side, the rebirthing aspect of this process. Mm, okay, and I want to actually pull some oracle cards now for additional advice. Just what you need to hear. Group one, what do you need to hear? Okay. Group one, what do you need to hear? Okay, from the Work Your Light Oracle deck, you have soul family, call in your tribe, you don't have to do it alone. And from this, I'm getting something that clicked a little bit earlier with the Ace of Pentacles, and that is you have a lot of um, guidance at this time from your spirit guides, if you like to call it that, your higher self, God, universe, supreme being, ascended masters, angels, whatever name you want to give to those higher realms that protect us and look out for us, connect to that aspect of your reality. Ask for higher guidance because you are connected right now and you have a lot of protection. If you're watching this at the time of upload, we're moving through some really interesting astrological events. Um, we're in eclipse season and that's always about redirection. And so these are the times when it's necessary that we surrender to higher guidance instead of following our egos. And this, these are also the times when we are very much protected because redirection can be alarming. It can be, um, it can feel like tower moments one after another, right? So really listen in to higher guidance and connect to them maybe through journaling if that's something you do through uh, softening into a meditative state and then asking silently internally for guidance or using oracle cards and tarot for advice whatever that is for you you're encouraged to connect to your guides and from the Osho Oracle deck, you have possibilities, and this is two of wands. And from this, I think the message that is coming through is simply that there are so many possibilities awaiting you, so many things that can happen moving forward, and you want to really open up to that. Start planning. Start considering what might be possible, what you might want to do moving forward, what you like and don't like. Now that you've had a deep cleanse and letting go of the past, you know, your perspective must have shifted. And so what do you like now? And what don't you like? What, what are you leaving behind that you don't want to see any more of in your life? possibilities are endless, start contemplating on what you want, what you need, what you want to see more of in your life. And now why don't we ask the cards for possible outcomes? What might be possible for you if you follow Tarot's advice? 
group one. What do we have in the outcomes position for this reading? Okay, so you have the Ten of Wands, you have the Star, King of Pentacles, and Two of Pentacles. So with the Ten of Wands, the Ten is the number of completion, and with the Wands, this is about the final stretch that is going to get you to finally unleash and let go of all the baggage you've been carrying. This is releasing em emotional baggage, that heaviness that we carry on our shoulders, letting go of the weight of the world, and beginning a new cycle now that you've come to the end of this overwhelming cycle. And you have the star here, so you're going to be restoring faith and hope in your connection to the rest of all that is, your connection to the universe, your guides, and God, if you want to call it that. The star comes after the tower, so it comes after a lot of dismantling and upheaval, and this is usually where we're completely worn out, we're exhausted and tired. And but because we've softened so much in the letting go process, we begin to actually listen to our truth, to the subtle guidance from the higher realms. We begin to see the stars and connect with them and see synchronicities and signs. And this is where we restore faith in our connection to the greater picture, the, the bigger picture, and the part we play in the bigger picture. And I think that's that's really beautiful considering, you know, we started off pretty rough with the Three of Swords, right? And Hermit and Out with the Old. So I really like that you have the star in your outcomes position. As you begin to connect more and more with higher guidance, make sure you're also looking out for synchronicities. And this can be the silliest things. For example, you know, maybe a random meme pops up on your Instagram feed and it's somehow strangely relevant to something you just talked about with your friend. Take that as a sign that you are connected, right? That's sometimes all we need to just kind of recognize that you're not in this alone and the rest of reality is playing with you. <laughs> reality is cheeky. <laughs> the higher realms are cheeky. They like to joke with you, joke back, um, laugh at the signs and synchronicities that follow you. And look out for angel numbers. I think they're always reassuring as well. And there might be some numbers that hit you a little bit more strongly than others. For example, for me, 444 is coming up a lot. And I just, I feel called to say that to you. So if you're seeing a lot of 444s, then that's you. Um, and that's protection from your spirit guides. You also have the King of Pentacles. I like this given that we got the Ace of Pentacles earlier. So you're really moving into being able to embody somebody who feels secure and stable in their physical reality. Somebody who is abundant and resourced and prosperous. This can also mean that you're going to meet somebody like this romantically or as a mentor or you know some like a business partner even so this can be you but this can also be somebody that you're welcoming in who becomes like a muse and inspiration and reflection for that part of you that you're nurturing and then you have the two of pentacles and this tells me that yes there's going to be a lot of movement following the chariot, you're going to feel like you're juggling a lot and that's not always a bad thing. 
sometimes we need to be in this space to really experience life and learn and take away from our experiences. So welcome the challenge of juggling various aspects of your life and see what you can gain from that challenge. Mm, I also want to say but make sure that you're prioritizing what's important to you and don't get lost in the frivolous things that are not so important. So continue to hold the wisdom of the hermit as you engage in social situations. Prioritize what's important to you honor yourself, your needs, and your boundaries, and don't take more than you can chew. Don't spread yourself too thin. Prioritize. Prioritize. And that's all you need to successfully juggle life. All right, now I'm going to pull two cards from the Moonology deck. Some final words of advice for group one. Alright. A time for healing. Balsamic moon. The answers you need are coming. Full moon in Gemini. That's the sign of communication. So the answers you need are coming either from your guides, from intuition, or from people around you. Because sometimes the people we meet are messengers for something much deeper that they may not even be aware of. And I'm going to read from the guidebook. For this card. Okay. This card is a reminder that it's important to speak your truth, but remember that your words have consequences and impact your listener. Right now, you need to guard against indiscretion. The answers you need may well come soon. The issue you're facing could well be one or a few conversations away from being resolved. If you're inquiring about a love situation, a little flirting may be called for. If you're in the middle of an argument, this card comes to you as a reminder of the old, very non-Gemini message. Least said, soonest mended. It's good to talk, but be careful you aren't causing yourself any issues with your words. Words have enormous power. As metaphysician Florence Scovelshin put it, your word is your wand. You create magic and your own reality every time you express yourself. Have an important conversation, but stay calm. And there are some additional meanings for this card that may, may be relevant for some of you. Don't be superficial. Someone is trying to flirt with you, have you noticed? You need to laugh off the situation and just move on. Job applications have good prospects. Lastly, the teaching is that talk, talk, and more talk as the emotional full moon moves into the communicative sign of Gemini. It's too easy to say too much, so mind how you go if you pull this card. This card can also indicate an enjoyable social event since the full moon in Gemini is a great time for socializing. This card also augurs well for any study you're either taking or considering. Okay, yeah, so this is a time for communication for you, a time for socializing and 
just remember to mind your boundaries, your needs, speak your mind, but be mindful in the way you do so. Open yourself up to connecting. Your hermitage is over and it's time for you to create some movement in your external reality. Welcome new opportunities. Listen to your guides. You don't have to do it alone. Listen to your intuition as you connect with people and communicate with clarity. Follow the signs and synchronicities and know that you're connected to the larger whole. You are a part of a bigger picture and sometimes messages come in very unique and funny ways. So look for those signs and synchronicities, laugh about it, and just recognize how much you are supported and protected and connected. There is a larger purpose to everything you're going through and as much as you're letting go of the old, you're also being reborn and welcoming the new. Place your attention now on what you are welcoming. We need to balance out the shedding and letting go with the other side of duality because both are true. So focus on what you're welcoming, focus on the endless possibilities and what you need and want moving forward, what you want to see more of in your reality. And know that the answers you need are coming. That was beautiful. All right, group one, that was your reading. Thank you so much for listening and I hope that you found it helpful. Let me know how the reading went for you in the comments below, and I would love to hear from you. And I'll see you very soon. Thank you for being here. Sending love. If you chose group two, this huge amethyst cluster, and also these two cards, Celebration and Tangled, and this is your reading. So, looking at these two cards, I'm getting the sense that this reading is going to be about some sort of social dynamic situation, relationships, where triangulation might be involved, or simply there's just a lot of confusion, a lack of clarity as to how to move forward with whatever conflict or misunderstanding that's arisen. Let's go in with the Golden Universal Tarot deck to get your current energies, group two. Group two, current energies, Tangled Celebration, Amethyst, group two. What are your current energies? So for your current energies, you have the Ace of Wands, Reverse Knight of Pentacles, and the Two of Swords. Let's start with this card. So indeed, there is a lack of clarity at this time for you. The Two of Swords often refers to feeling torn at a crossroads between two choices decision needing to be made. Maybe there are two very salient paths for you and you just can't seem to decide. And it's signified by this lady in the card who's blindfolded and she has two swords in two very different directions. And swords represent our thoughts, um, our intellect, the mind, mind energy. And Sometimes we are blindfolded like this for our own good. Sometimes this is for our protection and um, this is just part of the process in really integrating our lessons and flowing more naturally down our paths. So maybe you're not supposed to have clarity at this time. 
Maybe you're not supposed to really have the answers you're looking for just yet. This calls for divine timing. Surrender to the divine will and wait for the blindfolds to naturally fall off. And as you wait, there is something to take away from the situation that is the Two of Swords. And that is if you look at the Two Swords, they are indeed going in very opposite directions. But if you follow the Two Swords, they lead to the same place and that is the heart center. So you're being asked to connect to your feminine side rather than the mind, rather than over-rationalizing, getting lost in your thoughts. You're being asked to connect to the level of emotions, to your subconscious and your body and felt sense. And that's kind of like saying the answers you're looking for is not going to come to you at the level of the problem, right? The answers you're looking for is going to happen on a different frequency. If you continuously ruminate on the issue, you'll never get to the answer. And so go a little bit deeper. Don't get lost in your thoughts. Connect to the body. Go with felt sense. Follow your emotional guidance system. With the Knight of Pentacles in reverse, I'm getting the sense that there's a lot of impatience in you at this time. You're feeling that itch to do something about your situation, to make things happen and just move forward. You're itching to do something and that might feel really uncomfortable. Um, but seeing that this is the Knight of Pentacles and not the Hanged Man, this is temporary. It's not going to take too long before you move forward. The slowness that you're experiencing right now is very temporary. So yeah, I like that. Um, so if you know you want movement, it's good that you got this card as opposed to the hangman. It tells me that it's temporary. And maybe you're feeling impatient because you have the Ace of Wands. This is a spark, a creative spark, a new energy that you've awakened to within yourself. There's a bit more life force to work with all of a sudden in you, which makes you want to take action, makes you want to create and make something happen. This is passion, drive, sexuality, sensuality, and desire to interact with life, to move your life force and put it out there. And I really like that for you. This is energizing and it's exciting. Now let's ask for some advice from Spirit. What do you need to hear right now, group two? What do you need to hear right now, group two? Okay, there are two messages coming forward and we have two major arcanas. So the lesson here is quite big. You have the sun, the tower, and the seven of wands. Let's start with the sun. This is a really positive card to receive, and in fact, this is probably the most positive card you can get from Tarot. The sun wants to remind you that you are taken care of, you are abundant, you are prosperous, you are um, a child of this universe, you are always connected and um, resourced. The sun provides. The sun gives us the nourishment we need always. The sun gives us the warmth, the light that we need, right? So I want you to really take that in and feel that you are taken care of because you are the part of this earth and the sun always rises to give us what we need from this earth to continue being a part of this earth. The 
red drapery here is to remind you of your life force, very much like the Ace of Wands from earlier. The white stallion here also is all about life force, vitality, passion, drive, energy, and creativity, but in the purest sense, you know, not in a way that's distorted, that is shameful in our um, current paradigm, but this is in the purest sense where you are so connected to your life force and able to act on it in a way that brings prosperity and energy, movement uh, into your life and reality. This, the little boy here as well, he's naked, but he's innocent and pure, right? So the nakedness is about receptivity. It's about um, releasing shame and any distortions that we may have around our sexuality, our bodies, right? And just being completely connected to our deepest core, to our humanness, and allowing that to help us receive our abundance. So really feel the energy of this card after having just heard my little tangent on it. Feel it in you, connect to this archetype, and that's how you're going to be able to integrate the spiritual lesson that the sun is bringing forward for you. And also I want to say that this is Leo energy right? And you also got the seven of wands. And what I'm seeing here is the sun is when Leo energy is on its higher polarity. And the seven of wands is when Leo energy is kind of on its lower polarity. The advice from this is that you want to avoid being too absorbed in your ego being too defensive mm, when it comes to your persona and the masks you put on. Sometimes we need to put up a front to have the necessary boundaries and barriers to protect our more softer and vulnerable sides of us. However, I think the advice that I'm getting here is that it's easy to get carried away with that also, to get lost in our personas and masks and just you know, deflect and become defensive. And when we do this, the tower <laughs> moments can come unexpectedly. So always check in with your ego, check in with yourself so that you're not going overboard with your defenses and your protective qualities. If you identify too much with your ego and your persona, there is a possibility of all of a sudden experiencing a tower moment that you don't see coming. Tower, the tower is about dismantling old belief systems, old programming, really having like a big upheaval that forces you to let go of something that isn't working even if you refuse to acknowledge it. This is the universe being like, you know, if you're not going to do it, I'm going to do it for you. And I'm sorry, but you're going to hate this. I'm still going to do it for you because this is for your highest good. So you might have a tower moment coming up and this is going to feel really good if you welcome it, if you recognize that there are certain beliefs that you have to let go of, certain aspects of yourself that are becoming old and stale and that are holding you back. Tower moments are good when you welcome them, when you are honest about what you're needing at that time. But they can feel really alarming and scary and uncomfortable when we deflect. So be careful that you don't get too lost in protecting your ego and your personas. And let's go into some oracle cards now to get some further messages, maybe some clarification. 
group two, what else do you need to know right now? What do you need to hear? Okay, so from the Work Your Light deck, you have Council of Light, Divine Orchestration, Helpers in the Subtle Realms. So there is divine timing at play here. There is a reason why you're currently blindfolded. There is a reason why you're feeling all of this wands energy. And yet unable to fully act on it. You might have to go through a tower moment before the actional steps become available to you. But know that all of this is happening for you. You do have protection and guidance from the higher realms. If you're watching this at the time of upload, know that we're going through an eclipse season. So that means redirection. That means dismantling the old. That means upheaval and many, many tower moments. So welcome that. Know that you're protected. You're being redirected. You don't have to know just yet why all of this is happening, but let it happen and the rest will begin to make sense for you. I want to get one more card from the Work Your Light deck. You're already doing it. Stop overthinking. Keep facing your true north. Yeah, so... Stop overthinking. You're not going to get your answers at the level of your problem. That just make the problem um, more confusing. <laughs> Stop overthinking. There's no need to work on any of this at the mind level. The mind is dualistic in nature. So don't overthink it. Keep facing your true north. Connect to your creative life force and nurture that energy. Nurture that energy with this sun archetype now that you know what it means. You're already doing it. Even if you feel like you're not taking the necessary steps forward, you're, you actually are. Um, sometimes when nothing's happening, everything's happening. And I want to get one card for, for you from the Osho Zen Tarot deck. You have ripeness. And this is the Nine of Pentacles. Their version of the Nine of Pentacles. So what I'm getting here is you're very ripe. And that's why you feel that itch to do something. Continue to nurture that energy. There will come a time where you're going to be able to, you know, pick the fruits. But at this time, just let it build, you know. Let the, uh, if this is sexual tension, let the sexual tension build. <laughs> if this is your, your creative impulse to really get started on a project, nurture that feeling, feel so strongly about it that when you take action, it's just going to happen like that. Um, yeah, nurture this spark, this flame that you've awakened in yourself. You are very ripe and I'm just very excited for you seeing that. Now, let's go into possible outcomes for you group two. Possible outcomes if you were to follow Tarot's advice. Two more cards, please, for outcomes. Hmm. Okay, clarify. Wow, there are just so many cards. Okay. All right, so you have the Six of Swords, the world, I like that for you, 
Five of Swords and the Empress. Again, there are two major arcana cards. And let's start with these two. Yeah, the Six of Swords with the world. This tells me that you're very close to the completion of a cycle, a karmic cycle where you've learned all you can and now it's time to put it to an end, to tie up any loose ends and really move forward to the next phase of your life. This is the closing out of a chapter and you're being called to surrender to that. Allow yourself to be taken to the completion of this cycle. It might not feel like doing much. It might feel like simply um, resting and recuperating, kind of like being on this boat and retreating because this is you and you're not rowing the boat. You're not actually taking any action. Somebody else is doing that for you, whether that be spirit, your guides, um, or your loved ones, you know, helping you heal, offering support and connection at this time. So you don't really have to do much in order to tie up the loose ends and close this chapter. You just have to retreat surrender and recognize that it's important for you to move move from choppy waters to calmer shores now you have to choose calm over the chaos the moment you choose that you are actually you're putting an end to this chapter this can be in a relationship because you have the five of swords and the five of swords often to me is incomplete because it's a five, it's not a ten. It's um, usually putting up your guard and walking away thinking that your ego has won. It, but in this spread, given that you have the world, I think the five of swords is to just complement it, to say that, you know, I don't think you'll get the exact resolution you're looking for from a particular person that you've had conflict with or you know from this particular situation you're not going to get the exact words out of this person or the exact healing scenario for you to feel good you're not going to get that in your physical reality but that doesn't mean you have to carry this energy with you you can resolve it internally on your own with other people, you can take the lessons and just simply wish the other person the best, you know, and let them go. Recognize that they might not be ready to heal with you, but that doesn't have to rob you from your own healing. So tying up loose ends doesn't mean getting that out of somebody, you know. It can just simply be you deciding to close off this chapter because it's no longer serving you. It can be a one-sided thing and that's okay because this is about the lessons you're taking away from it. It has very little to do with the other person. The other person is just a catalyst, if anything, and their healing will happen on their own time. Uh, you don't have to be a part of their timeline anymore you've come to the end of the cycle and this doesn't have to be with a person maybe this is just a situation where you want an amicable scenario to feel you know that resolution and the cards are telling you you're probably not going to get that in your physical reality you're not going to get that resolution out here but that doesn't mean you can't feel the resolution internally and move on. So let go of the conflict, let go of the person. Don't, you don't have to seek anything from the situation anymore because you're probably not going to get it, get what you're looking for from them. But you will be able to get it internally if you surrender to the closing out of this chapter. You have all the lessons. 
you can, you've taken away as much as you can from the situation. So it's time to just let it go without any hard feelings. And um, you also have the Empress here, and this is divine feminine energy. And this is not, you know, gender. This is an energetic polarity that's often gendered as the feminine. It's a dynamic. And I think this is in response to the Ace of Wands. So if you have a certain creative impulse that has awakened in you, as this card suggested earlier, along with a couple other cards, you're going to be really nurturing this, but in a very feminine way, and that is trusting flow, divine timing, following synchronicities and higher guidance, instead of forcing your way or trying to control the circumstances in order to get what you want. This is really flowing with things. This is not chasing, <laughs> this is receiving and attracting. So if this is in regards to romance, you know, and um, falling in love with a person, you want to really be in your in a receptive space where you're listening to higher guidance and flowing with the situation, allowing it to naturally unfold. Instead of thinking that you have to show up in a certain way in order to appear attractive or chase scenarios and circumstances in order to get what you want. If you want something to go well, you really just have to allow it to naturally unfold. Same with um, creative projects and your career. How can you trust divine timing instead of controlling people and circumstances in order to get what you want? Because if you're in that receptive energy, what's meant for you will come to you. There's no doubt about that. And you have awakened, you know, that desire. So let that desire help you attract it in physical manifested form. Just let things naturally unfold. So that was, that was a lot of advice, even in the outcomes position. <laughs> I'm going to now pull a card from the Moonology deck for you, and we'll end it there. Oh, okay. So group one also got this card. Let me pull another one. One more. Okay, so this is the card that group one also got. The answers you need are coming. Full moon in Gemini. So what I'm getting from this is, especially if you're in eclipse season, you really have to kind of wait out this period of redirection. Things will fall into place and, you know, everything will make sense after a while. Just be patient with the unfolding at this time and expect powerful change. New moon eclipse. And I think the, um, the eclipse on October 25th is a new moon eclipse, a partial new moon eclipse. So there you go. Something might happen after that particular eclipse. So look forward to that. There's your little timeline if you're, if you're feeling a little bit impatient. And you know what? Why don't we read from the guidebook for New Moon Eclipse? Okay. If you want affirmation that you can achieve your dreams and get the desired outcome in the situation you're asking about, then this is it. This is a card of new beginnings, and there are powerful energies at work. But be prepared. This could be a ride, and events now could even be jarring and uncomfortable. However, any new directions you take will almost always lead somewhere better than where you are at the moment. Whatever is happening now is happening for a reason you'll appreciate later on. A new portal is opening up, 
and all you have to do is have the courage to forget about the past and move through it. You're being put back on the right path. There is nothing to fear. And to attune this mo- to attune to this moon, never mind the past. Life evolves every single day. And here are some additional meanings for the card. Yes, yes, a thousand times yes. You're being shunted towards your life purpose. Whatever is happening now is happening for your highest good. This is an important turning point in your life. And the teaching of this moon is new moon eclipses are among the most exciting astrological events. They herald a complete change of pace. It's as though you're headed in one direction, probably being guided by your ego, and then here comes the divine, the goddess, or spirit, to turn you instead to face the direction you actually need to go. Regardless of whether or not there's a new moon eclipse happening when you pull this card, it's a powerful affirmation of positive turnarounds. Wow, goosebumps. And it's crazy because there is a new moon eclipse happening very soon. So you were really meant to hear this. This is insane. Yeah, so, you know, it says here, be prepared. It could be quite a ride and events now could even be jarring. So that's the tower card for you, you know, and when we are lost in our egos, it can be really difficult to accept these redirections, but recognize that you're being put on the right path and there's nothing to fear. Have the courage to forget about the past, to move through it, put it in the past, never mind the past, complete this cycle and surrender to the right path, allow the unfolding to happen, welcome the divine, the goddess, and face the direction you actually need to go. Yeah, this is a complete change of pace for you. You were probably headed in one direction guided by your ego, but now you gotta go the other way. (laughs) Follow divine guidance. Wow. So that was your reading group too. Thank you so much for listening and for being here. Let me know how the reading went for you in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. I'm sending you so much love, light, and healing. Good luck on this new direction. (laughs) And I'll see you very soon. If you chose group three, citrine or smoky quartz, I still have no idea what this is. <laughs> and if you chose the two oracle cards that came out for you, revolutionary and angel, then this is your rating. So looking at these two cards, The situation that you may be inquiring about involves a very radical energy, rebel energy, and seeing the Hierophant in reverse, there's a lot of energy, oomph, (laughs) and I'm curious to know more about the situation. So for you, we're going to be using the Lightseer's deck, and let's begin by asking about your current energies. Group three, group three, revolutionary angel. Group three, what are your current energies? Hmm. Okay, so you got 
Tower, Queen of Pentacles, and Six of Swords. It's an interesting mix because, yeah, okay, so we'll start with the Tower. This is a major arcana card, so this is a big deal. <laughs> this is the main energy um, for your situation at this time, how you're feeling. The tower is about dismantling old belief systems, programming, and conditioning. This is breaking apart a paradigm and shifting your worldview and perspective to something that serves you better, that is more... Um, true. It's more relevant to how you're supposed to walk through life. And when this happens, it can be really jarring for the ego because the ego is the part of us that upholds cultural programming, right? So to go through a tower moment and to let part of that go can make us really question what we believe in, how we feel about ourselves, and who we are. And I feel like because you got the revolutionary here, I feel like you're really welcoming this actually. Like you see the wisdom in it, you're dismantling a paradigm, and you're really letting that sink in completely. And maybe you also feel the need to inspire others to do the same, to question the way we think and what we've been culturally programmed to believe as it's, it can, it's usually quite harmful and what we believe in culturally just very heavily distorted in most cases. So I'm getting the sense that, yeah, you're really welcoming this shifting of a paradigm change of conditioning and you you want others to also go through that with you you have the queen of pentacles here and for some of you i feel like this is about environmentalism and climate change social activism something about physical reality and the resources that we take from the earth so i'm getting that for some of you this can also be other aspects of the material realm, such as money, seeing the economy in a different way, seeing the home in a different light, or relationships and how we operate in relationships. It could be a dismantling of, honestly, any sort of programming because it often is always about how we view the world right and what's happening out here in um physical material reality and that's what the suit of pentacles represent the earth element but yeah i see that you're taking a feminine approach of uh receptivity of groundedness and emotionality i like that i think yeah it's very grounded it's very healthy you also have the Six of Swords. I'm getting the sense that you are really surrendering to higher wisdom and guidance moving forward. There's This is a period of retreat and recuperation. You're in this boat allowing yourself to be led to calmer shores. There's not a lot you have to do just yet. You're in this energy of just being swiftly taken to calm choosing calm over chaos. You could also be changing locations, traveling, moving somewhere physically or mentally, emotionally, changing mindsets, mm. but it's happening in a very gentle way where you're leaving space for higher guidance to come in. That's really nice. Now let's ask for guidance. What do you need to hear? Group three, what do you need to hear? Group three, what do you need to hear? Hmm. 
Okay, so you got the Hierophant. And I want a clarification over that. So the moment I thought that, the King of Wands popped up. Then you have the Ace of Wands. I think we're going to need additional guidance after this. So with the Hierophant, this is the cultural structures and intuition, intuition, institutions that are very well built and solidified in your physical reality. And with the King of Wands as clarification, you're being encouraged to rebel against this, like the revolutionary here. The King of Wands is somebody who is incredibly charismatic. This is an outspoken, confident person very, who's very much in touch with their solar plexus and the power that oozes from this center. This is somebody who isn't afraid to speak out and use their voice. This is a leader and a leader who is incredibly charismatic. And so you're being encouraged to be this revolutionary, charismatic, leader type personality in order to challenge the status quo, the way things have always been, the beaten path, the way people have been conditioned to think and believe. It's time for a shifting of a paradigm for people to consider a new way of being. This could be decolonization. And so advice here, yeah, is that you want to embody the king of wands now. This is the kind of person we need in order for things to shift. Maybe you're an influencer. <laughs> Maybe you have some sort of following. I mean, if you don't, you might want to consider it. We all have the luxury these days of the internet, right? And all of us having platforms where we can share our voices, whether that be Twitter or Instagram or YouTube, like I'm doing now. So consider the influence that you can have on people and how you want to share your voice. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Interesting message. I didn't, I didn't see that coming. I didn't think we would go there, but I think this is further supported by the Ace of Wands. Nurture your inner fire, your creative life force energy. Let this spark build into a flame and let that propel you towards a creative process that's going to help you honor what you want to do here, which is shaking up the status quo, right? Let this creative firing you build so that the action you're taking is organic and natural and divinely guided. Because if we go about this from the place of ego, chances are it's not going to be received well. You're going to get a lot of backlash or maybe the way you speak about these opinions you want to express um, can sound harsh or um, insensitive. If you allow it to come naturally through you in a creative way that feels intuitive and inspired, then it will be received better by those who are listening. So consider that, consider how you can nurture this energy so that everything that you put out, whether it be a speech, an Instagram post, a caption, it's organic, it's um, substantial, and it's genuine and sincere, and it's coming from the heart, coming from the core of you. Let's get some more cards for advice because I think we're onto something here. This is very interesting. <laughs> Group three. What else do you need to hear? Group three. Oh, I love this. The age of light. You've been training for this for lifetimes. This is the card you get when you're really living your life's purpose. 
this is your soul's purpose, you've been training for this for lifetimes, you know what to do. You know what to do. So have determination, have focus, and just put yourself out there. You might not feel like it, but deep down, you know what to do. You know what needs to be done here. You've been training for this. You also have starseed. What lights you up? So what I'm hearing is as much as you might feel incredibly passionate about being a revolutionary and dismantling old systems and all of that can be taken in a very, you know, it's heavy. It's heavy, but um, you can also put a positive spin on it and reinstall hope in people. So as much as you're talking about the negative and heavy stuff, make sure you're also leaving room for the hopeful stuff, the more, the lighter stuff, so that with every word you speak, you're inspiring people as much as you're getting them to question things. Make it hopeful. Make your message hopeful. Yeah. And let's get a card from the Osho deck. What else do you need to hear? Anything else, group three? You have silence. So if you're confused about how to move forward, what to say, uh, the actions you should be taken, really take time to meditate, to release resistance and just soften into connecting with your creative spark, your life force. Soften, make time for stillness and silence so that you can naturally listen to your intuition. That's really necessary to avoid acting from your ego. Acting from your ego is not going to bring forward the results you're looking for. It's not going to bring forward the impact. You want to really allow things to come naturally and that requires you to listen to your intuition and to take action in a very congruent and sincere way. So soften, let go, release resistance, find stillness and silence so you can actually listen to you know, divine guidance along this path that you're on, which is your life's purpose. Okay, now let's ask about possible outcomes if you were to follow Tarot's advice. Group three, possible outcomes. Group three. Mm hmm this for you. You have two major arcana cards. You have the chariot, the emperor, and a reverse four of cups. Let's start with the chariot. The chariot carries a lot of momentum and I see this as you having the determination and focus to just go after what you want. You're like, F it, I'm just going to take action. I don't care if I make any mistakes, if I make a fool of myself. That's just part of the process. I'm going to go after what I want because I see purpose in it. And so if you connected with the influencer spiel, um, this could be you, you know, getting on social media and starting to really speak out and use your voice for the greater good. And, um, you know, having like choosing to to have influence to speak out to share your opinions and create like a positive impact 
And with this, there's always that risk, right, of making a mistake, of saying something that you probably shouldn't have said, of looking foolish in front of people, embarrassing yourself. There's always that risk, and that's okay. That's just the risk you have to take if you're really looking for victory. You really just have to go after it with enough determination and sincere uh, resolve. You will succeed. You will succeed. This is why the chariot is the card of victory. Okay, after the chariot, you have the emperor. So I see this as a progression from the king of wands to a very dignified, authoritative position. The king of wands is a great leader, but he's still a king, right? And to move to the emperor is to embody pure, divine masculine energy, to create your own structures, your own awareness, perspectives, and analysis. This is really stepping into owning the mind, your thoughts, your worldview, and the structures you have in your life, and to be a leader when it comes to all of that, to guide people, um, to inspire people with your firmness and stoicism. So this is divine masculine energy. Again, this is not about gender. It's an energetic polarity that lies so much deeper, which we all need to learn to embody because we're all leaders. We all have a purpose and um, to harness this power is to take responsibility for your part, for your words, your thoughts, your actions. This is just complete ownership, responsibility, firmness, structure, and authority. You might also be meeting a mentor of some sort who inspires you to get into this sort of headspace and embodiment. Somebody who already has this down. So maybe you read like an autobiography of somebody who has been very influential in the past, or you follow a, a person on YouTube who does this, who's doing what you want to be doing, or yeah, or a father figure. Maybe it's your father or some sort of masculine type in your life that gets you to think about authority, power, and structure, and the intellect. These are very masculine themes, and they often direct us to the father archetype. So that's something you can contemplate on, the father archetype, and maybe what you need to heal in regards to that also. Okay, now I'm going to pull two cards from the Moonology deck. What else do you need to hear? Group three. What else do you need to hear? Ooh. Okay. Show the world the real you, full moon in Aquarius. This is about showing up, speaking out, using your voice. Don't let pride get in your way, full moon in Leo. So not speaking out through your ego, but really connecting to a more grounded, sincere part of you that's going to allow you to be better heard and received by other people. Then you have balanced spirituality and practicality, full moon in Pisces. OK, 
Okay, I feel called to read to you the guidebook description for Full Moon in Aquarius. Aquarius is all about progress and modernity, so this is the time to move forward. The new moon in Aquarius card means no looking back. Change is on its way, and it could come quickly. Whether you get the change you want depends both on whether you believe you can have it and how much you're relying on others to bring it to you. This card comes with a suggestion that you may need to do things independently on your own. But be loving, not too pragmatic. Time may be of the essence when this card comes up. Aquarius energy has an electric feel to it. Certainly, there is a sense that you need to let go of the past and move towards your future as soon as possible. And to attune to the moon, Explore the idea that it's not what you know, but whom you know. Hmm, interesting. And here are some additional meanings for the card that some of you might connect with. You need to be more detached from the situation. Thinking outside the box will bring the solution. Improve your karma by doing some charitable work. And the teaching of this card is... Aquarius is the sign of invention, modern advances in technology, and humanity. Its energy is a little brittle. It's individual, scientific even, and relatively emotionally detached. Many people think Aquarius is a water sign because the Aquarius symbol is the water bearer. But it's actually an air sign and is far more intellectual than the emotional water signs. As is this card, no matter when you draw it, dropping convention works well with this energy. So that is your reading, group three. Thank you so much for listening. And let me know how it went in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. Sending you so much love, light, and healing. I'll talk to you very soon.